everyone, so as you can see I am now in Cordoba. It will be just a short stop before the rest of my trip around Spain, so let's get started. So my first stop was the Alcaza de los Reyes Cristianos, or also known as the Castle of the Christian Monarchs. This was my first stop as the castle closes at 2.30pm, so it limits my itinerary a bit. At first I didn't find this castle that much interesting, aside from the hall of mosaics that had all these Roman period mythological mosaics that I found so intriguing. But the journey in this castle just kept surprising me with one amazing thing after another. Or maybe I'm just easily contented. I'll let you guys decide for yourselves. Following the castle, I am making my way to see a few more of the smaller attractions. These attractions are all relatively distant from each other, so you are going to be seeing a lot more walking than the actual attractions itself. So here we have the synagogue of Cordoba, and also the only existing synagogue in all of Andalusia. For those who are unsure of what a synagogue is, it is basically a place of worship for the Jewish. However, after the expulsion of the Jews, this building was transformed to be used for other purposes and was only restored when the inscriptions were discovered much later on. I must say I absolutely love all these walking, from the scenic alleyways to the passing of horses, the avoidance of occasional cars, and all the unique architectural and decorative elements that are so intriguing and pleasant looking. I possibly like these walks more than some of the attractions. So the last stop for the day is the Viana Palace, home to the Marquises of Viana since the 15th century. The Viana Palace covers more than 6,500 square meters, of which almost 4,000 square meters belongs to the patios, the courtyards, the gardens, and the open spaces. As multiple nobles resided in this house over centuries, Multiple extensions were made to the house. This gave it the chance for each noble to reflect their taste and fashion for the new patios and gardens that came with each expansion. This also gave us the chance to see all these patios in all their uniqueness and beauty. this fish I lands earlier. But yeah. The Vienna Palace right now. Um, they, they basically have a lot of patios like in Cordoba, not just the palace, but because this was the royal palace, so the patios are generally more well decorated. And yeah. So like having a 
hard time just knowing where to go and where I am. And you can like, look at how tall it is. This is almost a maze. I'm just gonna find my way back to the entrance right now because um, there's a guided tour to the upper floors of the palace and I need to be there for that. busy visiting all like the attractions because they're closed tomorrow so yeah I'm find food now and then check in to my hotel just to share during my meals I almost always order a glass of vermouth which I heard was a good and more local alternative to sangrias they always serve it with a small dish of olives which surprisingly goes pretty well with the vermouth so you can give it a try. I also had this dish which I love so much, but I couldn't remember the name of it. So anyone watching, if you know what's the name of this dish, please let me know. Roman bridge today. I'm not crossing it. I don't know where it leads to. But this is apparently one of the key structures in Cordova, built in the first century before Christ, I think. There are these horses um, that kind of carriage people around in Cordoba. Not as many as there will be in Seville, but there are a few here and it's really sad. The horses seem to be in like really bad condition, at least the ones that I see. Like they either look kind of frail or for the white horses their fur is rather dirty where like the saddles and straps are. So yeah. I mean, just based on what I see, not all, I mean, caretakers may be like that. So yeah, I'm entering the bell tower and the cathedral now. See the bell tower from here but basically it rings like every hour so my hotel being like right next to the mesquita and the bell tower <laughs> i hear the bell kind of every hour it's kind of annoying <laughs> but also somehow a little bit i don't know like spiritual in that sense in, in a sense
called um, the cathedral. It's kind of like the, uh, I would say it's a Christian edition. It's like you can see the remnants of Gothic architecture. So I'm at the top of the bell tower. Um, it kind of looks out into like the city. Yeah. Climbing up was really tiring. It was just a minute climb though, so it's not that bad, but still tiring. Because it's really narrow, so like, you know, people can't overtake you, so you have to just keep going. <laughs> So I thought that was like the top of the bell tower but apparently there's now another section that goes even higher. bell tower comes the main part of the mesquita, the actual cathedral itself. I had came for the arches but I didn't realise they had this cruciform layout with the nave and the choir that was similar to other typical cathedrals as well. My favourite part of the cathedrals are always the domes because who doesn't like domes? And every dome is really so different so it just never fails to amaze me. Islamic, Jewish and kind of Christian influences. They all come together really nicely. I think that's that's what makes it even more amazing. Look at all these arches. Ah, it's so pretty. And this was what I came for. I have seen this for the longest time online and always dreamed of visiting and the day has finally came. I love everything, the double arches, the array of columns that seem to go on forever, the way the light comes in at one area, and a seemingly complex structure that is actually so simple when you break it down into its basic forms. So no tripods are allowed here. I was trying to use one and then I got stopped by one of the security. So yeah, I guess I can't take a picture. A proper picture of this. Cathedral. Yep, it's alright. I'm happy now. I'm gonna leave the cathedral now. Goodbye, I'll miss you. I'm gonna leave the cathedral now. So that I don't want to leave. It's too pretty. Hey. I'm reaching the exit. I'm reaching the exit.
is visiting one of the pea shields. It is one of the more popular ones in um, this area, San Basilico. San Basil San Basilio. It's right there. San Basilio. But yeah, I think it's not. It's not like the season for the flowers and most of the pea shields will open up in there. It's the most kind of extravagant. That's usually in May. But it's not that. I mean, I didn't get the guided ticket because like I've already seen a lot of patios, patios at um, um, what's that, the Vienna Palace. So yeah. I was at the patios just now. Um, I didn't buy the ticket for um, entry to some of the patios, but some of them are free also. So I went to the free to the free entrance ones, and in one of them, um, the tour guide was I'm not I won't say tour guide, but like I would say the owner of the the house. She was really nice and friendly. So she ushered me in, and I was worried. Like I, I initially didn't want to go in because like um, <laughs> my lack of Spanish skills were a bit like. I don't know, off-putting, I didn't want to disturb anyone. But she ushered me in and then there was another group of like, um, I think Spanish people there. So she was, the, the owners kind of like just always explain um, a bit of the history of the place. I was the only one speaking English there and she, tra everything she said, she translated in English for me and that was so nice. Um, although like, I couldn't make out like all her English words but it was so nice that she actually took the effort to explain them to me and after the tour ended, she also like told me um, she took her she took the own initiative to tell me like where to go to see the other patios and where to go to see like other landmarks. And I thought that was really nice. But one thing about the landmarks that I learned there was that um that I learned from her was that basically the patios are all like um kept within the family. It's it's basically passed down um the family lah. And um I think that was her son-in-law's house, so she kind of like manages it for him. Um, and they had these like sticks with a can to water the, the plants on the walls that are really high up. And those were all like man-made. And some of the, I mean the patio also like houses and showcases um, some columns and fragments of maybe that area in the past that are from like the first century um, I don't know if it's BC or I think it's most likely after Christ, but from that that Roman period, and that's really cool. She was saying also that because these patios, right? Like usually they they are the most extravagant and flourish in the May period. I think that's like the best season for like all those flowering plants, and they usually have a competition every year. Um, it started in nineteen twenty one, and this year marks like the hundredth. Um, anniversary, the 100th competition in a way. So this year marks the last, um, the 100th century competition and it will also be the last competition sadly. So yeah, it was really nice. It was nice speaking or having someone speak to me or having a proper conversation with someone after like just, it's not even that long, just like five days. But yeah, I'm leaving for Seville tomorrow. And I hope I get there fine and I don't miss my train, so we'll see.